For the automatic volume control, the ABC input is used to select the ABC input channel, which should be used to match the same channel in the supervision setting. If the channel is not equipped with a noise detector, it can't be selected. Calculation indicates more than one noise detector in one line. The device is capable of automatic volume control according to average or maximum values. The ABC has many parameters to be set, but is usually recommended to use the default value. Sampling period is the supervision cycle of ambient noise. Its setting range is related to the number of connected modules of the device. Sensor deviation means the deviation between the actual sound pressure level and the one measured by the noise detector. Actual sound pressure can be measured by the sound pressure meter. Constant audio signal, such as white noise and sine wave, can be played during the commissioning. The deviation can be got by measured near the device using the sound pressure meter. Any interference should not be allowed during the measurement. Reaction level, the unit of the dB, is the bound value to enable the ABC function. When the sound pressure is equal to or greater than this value, the ABC function is enabled to adjust the outcome value automatically. When it is less than the bound value, the output volume is the minimum value. The level deviation minimum is used to set the minimum volume of the adjusting range. The level deviation max is used to set the maximum volume that can be adjusted through the ABC. Factor provides the function to set the volume adjusting ratio. If there is the same kind of sound change, the bigger the adjusted value, the bigger the volume change. Action threshold is the variation value that is higher than the last ambient noise collection. Only if the current value of the collection is greater than the last, the volume can be adjusted. The smaller the parameter is, the more sensitive the AVC is. SNR is the lowest signal ratio between the broadcasting audio and the ambient noise. Controlled line setting describes the zones that are controlled by the AVC. We can select the zone as needed. Calibrate AVC module is used to calibrate the broadcast signal of the noise detector under an online condition. During calibration, the DCS-3000 will automatically broadcast a periodic pulse signal. Therefore, the digital signal detector can compare the signal from the loudspeaker with the signal from a microphone to improve the accuracy of the noise measurement. Calibrate reaction level automatically set a parameter for the reaction level. When it is enabled, the DCS-3000 will automatically broadcast a noise signal at the maximum value and collect noise data according to the minimum volume and the SNR. During this procedure, the configuration software will broadcast a noise signal to the targeted zones. Users can select the network adapter which is connected with the 618 system. Read data is used to inform measured value of ambient noise. Actual value of ambient noise, adjustment bound value, reaction level, broadcast output volume, working status, last action time, and module data can be shown. Recording the task setting. Task setting is another important section of the X618's configuration. We will start with the playlist, which includes a library, playlist, and contents. The users must configure the audio library first if they want to play the audio files in the system. Audio file name, size, and length, and the total size of the library will be shown at the top of the window. The DCS-3000 will share the audio library with the NPMS, the call station, and the NRI. Click the plus icon and select one or more of the audio files from the PC to add to the audio file library. This software supports MP3 and WAV audio formats. Other audio formats will be converted automatically to the needed format. Select one or more audio files, then click the X icon and the selected files will be deleted from the library list. If the audio file you want to delete has already been added to the playlist, 
it will show as being used by the playlist and cannot be deleted from the library. Once the library settings are complete, the playlist can be created. Click the icon plus in the playlist view. Enter the name and select the playlist type, private or public. The public playlist can be used by the DCS 3000 and the NPMS, which is your call station. The private playlist can only be used by the DCS 3000 and not the call station. After creating a playlist, drag the audio files you need from the library to the content area. After configuring the playlist, we need to configure the task module. Different types of tasks will be created to meet the needs of the project. Click the plus icon to add a new task. Enter the task name. Then select the type of this task. There are two different types to be selected, normal or emergency. Normal is used for standard public address such as the background music or a voice broadcast. The priority range setting is from 56 to 255. Emergency is used for urgent broadcasts, where the set priority range is between 1 to 55. Audio type contains two different types of audio sources. We can choose the audio from the playlist that we've just created, or we can also select Net Audio. This refers to the external audio sources connected with the NRI or the DCS 3000. In the policy area, we can define the policy for each task. Delay is used to specify a time in the range between 0 to 600 seconds for which the audio is delayed before being played. Priority is used to set the priority of the task. If multiple tasks have been assigned to the same zone simultaneously, the highest priority task will be played, meaning the smaller the value, the higher the priority, with 1 being the highest priority. Loop is used to set the play count for each task. Audition is the preview function of the playlist of its contents and by auditioning or previewing them for the device's built-in speakers in advance. Busy wait is used to enable the lower priority task to enter the queue to play once the higher priority task is finished. Otherwise, the original task would be canceled automatically. Recovery is a resume function that will automatically resume the task which was interrupted by the higher priority task. When the higher priority task is finished, the original tasks will continue. In speaker lines, we can select the appropriate broadcast zones. If tasks are configured for the DCS 3000, only local zones are able to broadcast. A maximum of eight zones can be selected. The DCS 3000 operation setting contains two main parts, operation and timing. In operation, we find four columns. The key list is used to assign the tasks for button 1 to button 4 on the DCS 3000 front panel. Contact input list is used to set the parameters for the dry contact input. There are two types of dry contact inputs on the DCS physical and virtual. Physical dry contact input is the signal that is sent from the corresponding physical ports on the device. Virtual dry contact input is used when a third party alarm system is connected. In the device status output, the dry contact output should be set as a general fault output. The ports are normally open until a fault is detected. For the timing section under the daily selections, each DCS can configure up to 14 daily schedules. Select one cell of the day timing list and enter the schedule name. Then start time, end time, and task to set this timing content. Each daily schedule can include up to 40 timing contents. Weekly selections is used to set the weekly timing task. We can select one daily timing for each day of the week from the daily schedule library. If one content of the day is open, it means that no daily timing schedule has been configured. 
Specialty timing is a design for special events. For example, to set a special plath, excuse me, to set a special play task on unique event or date, we need to select start date and end date. For the timing content, we can select from the daily timing tasks. So be sure that you've already created a timing task that you will need in the daily timing list to pull that into the list. For the NPS call station, device settings include properties, time, language, supervision, devices, and groups. In properties, device ID is the device identification in the system which is assigned automatically by the configuration tool. It can be changed for a range between 5,000 to 6,000. The device name can be changed if needed. The emergency button can be selected to enable the emergency button on the call station. We can also set this as a priority. The emergency button task can be configured to play a preset audio task when you press the emergency button on the call station. The pre-signal and the end signal of the microphone paging can be set separately. The default setting is no signal. Only the audio files within a 60 second duration of the audio file library can be selected for this function. For example, this would be a tone or a chime. Voice detection is used to detect the microphone signal during the broadcast. If there is no sound for a certain period of time, the broadcast will stop automatically. The time delay can be set in the period box. The line output is used to set the signal type such as disable, the monitor signal, and the output of the microphone. The default setting is disabled. Multicast channels means the number of audio channels that can be played at the same time. This cannot be edited. First Multicast IP allows to set the first multicast IP address for the network audio broadcast. The software will automatically assign the address and the default is 224.0.6.1. Standby time allows the user to set a time frame as to when the device will go into standby mode. There are eight time options available starting at 10 seconds. The default setting is set to never. The picture is to select the picture which will be shown in the standby window of the MPMS call station. Enable buzzer is set to activize, activate the buzz inside the call station. If there is a fault detected, it will generate a buzzing alarm. Enable general fault is to enable the general fault detection function of the call station. Time date is selected to show the time and the date on the screen of the call station. Enable key beep is not available. If we want to delete the temporary recording files and auto recording files in the system, we need to enable these two options here. It is suggested that you enable these two options. Extended key module setting is used to set parameters of K8 or K4. If the extended key module XK4 or XK8 is connected, the type of extended key modules can be chosen from here. You must match what is in use. The default setting is none. Network setting is used to set call station network parameters. The old IP is the IP address before setting which we can get it from the call station screen. When updating the network parameters of the system devices, the computer IP scheme needs to be the same as the old IP of the call station as well as the subnet. Click the update button for setting the IP address of the call station. The two IP addresses will be the same after updating successfully. The default IP address is 192.168.2.100.